الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين المصطفى أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وقرآنه الحميد وقوله الحق أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فلما أتاها نودي يا موسى إني أنا ربك فاخلعنا عليك إنك بالوادي المقدس طوى وأنا اخترتك فاستمع لما يوحى إنني أنا الله لا إله إلا أنا فاعبدني وأقم الصلاة لذكري إن الساعة آتية أكاد أخفيها لتجزى كل نفس بما تسعى فلا يصدنك عنها من لا يؤمن بها واتبع هواه فتردى صدق الله العلي العظيم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد Continuing with our discussion of سورة طه So far we've discussed we said that the beginning of the surah discusses some of the roots of the religion. Tawheed. It discusses the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Musa alayhi salam came. He saw what seemed to be a fire. But when he approached it, he realized that this fire is in the tree and the tree is not burning. It was something unique, something special. And then he heard a voice. A voice that, of course, we say God created this voice. God himself does not speak the way you and I speak. He creates voices. And the voice that God created told Musa, Inni ana rabbuk. I am your Lord. This is to comfort him, to comfort Musa alayhi salam, to prepare him. So I am your Lord, I am the one who took care of your upbringing from the day you were born to this dunya until today, and until the day you die, I'll be taking care of you. I'm your Lord, Rabb. And he wanted to prepare Musa for what's going to come now. He's going to receive the message, he's going to become a messenger. So Allah spoke to him in this language, Inni ana rabbuk. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, فَخْلَعْنَ عَلَيْكَ Remove your shoes. إِنَّكَ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ طُوَانِ We spoke about that the last time. So now, he's ready. Ready for what? Risala. For Nubuwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, وَأَنَ اخْتَرْتُكَ فَاسْتَمَعْ لِمَا يُوحَى This is verse number 13 of Surah Taha. I have chosen you, ya Musa. I've chosen you. So listen to what is going to be revealed. So now the revelation comes. Choosing, usually when you choose something, it indicates that you have choices to make. That's how you choose. Otherwise, if you're only given one choice, there's not really much choosing. You're forced to take this. Sometimes a person will come and says, you do things this way, my way or the highway, خلاص, that's it. You have to do it this way. Then there is not much of a choice. You're forced to do, accept that. But the word here, when it says that I am choosing you, وَأَنَخْتَرْتُكَ I chose you. Apparently, there is a choice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made. 
and it is narrated in the ahadith Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa, Ya Musa, do you know why I chose you to be my messenger among all the people? There were other people as well who were also pious, muttaqeen. But I chose you, Ya Musa. He said, no, Ya Allah, why? He said, because you used to take your face, put it in the sand, and wipe your sand with your face. تعفر وجهك في التراب. You used to do sujood, not only do sujood, but you used to wipe your face also on the sand, out of humbleness to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, to show your modesty to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, to show your to show your submission to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And we know in the ahadith the best state that Allah loves of a abd of a servant is the state of sujood. That's why it is said that a man asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam several questions. Among the questions and the things that he asked Rasulullah, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to be with you in Jannah. I want to be with you. Qala fa'atil sujoodaka lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prolong your sujood to Allah. And that's why Mu'mineen and Mu'minat are recommended that after the Salat, when you pray Salat, first of all, go to sujood and say at least three times, if not hundred times, but at least three times, say what? Shukran lillah, shukran lillah, shukran lillah. This is called sajdatu shukr. Hundred times after every Salat, wajib Salat, if not hundred, at least three times after every wajib Salat. That is highly recommended. And then when you read the dua after salat, many of you, mashallah, have memorized these duas. Dua after salat al-fajr or salat al-dhuhr or asr and so on and so forth. Some of you have memorized the duas in the month of Ramadan. Allahumma adkhil ala ahl al-qubur al-surur. Or ya aliyu ya azim. These duas, perform them in the state of sujood. Go to sujood and read the same dua. You have it memorized already. So read it in the state of sujood. When you're in Salat, the last rak'ah of the Salat, many mu'mineen read a dua. Ya waliya al-'afiyah, nas'aluka al-'afiyah. For example, afiyat al-deen wa al-dunya wa al-akhirah. Or ya latif, irham abdaka al-da'if. Ilahi qabuha al-dhambu min abdik, falyahsun al-'affu min indik. يَا مَنْ لَهُ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ اِرْحَمْ مَنْ لَيْسَ لَهُ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ These are a whole bunch of du'as. One can recite in the salat, in the sujood, in the state of sujood. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this, the state of sujood. So Musa alayhi salam used to prolong his sujood to Allah. Not only that, he would wipe his face on the sand. In some of the a'mal we do, sometimes... We take our face and we put it on the, on the turba, on the muhr. And we put our right cheek on the sajda, on the turba. Then we turn to our left cheek on the turba. Then we put our forehead on the turba. And that is again a, a sign of humiliation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more a person humiliates himself to Allah, the higher his status will be with Allah. That is the standard. So the more a person submits, the more the person humiliates himself for the sake of Allah, the higher his status will be. So you find our Imams, alayhim salam, our Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, they used to be in the utmost state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The utmost state. So here, Allah told Musa, I chose you because of this, ya Musa. So here, the reason... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, وَأَنَ اخْتَرْتُكَ فَاسْتَمِعْ لِمَا يُوحَى I chose you, so listen to what is going to be revealed to you. For example, at the time of Musa alayhi salam, at the time of Musa alayhi salam, there was a man by the name of Bal'am bin Ba'ura. Bal'am, he knew Ismullah al-A'zam. He knew that knowledge. Which means he had a high state 
of piety and taqwa to learn the Ismullah al A'zam. Ismullah al A'zam is God's holy name. We read in Dua al Asharat or Dua al Simat, which is to be recited in Friday at a time like this one, just before Maghrib. Allahumma inni as'aluka bismika al Ali al A'zam, al A'az al Ajal al Akram. Oh Allah, I ask you by this holy name. For which if you ask, if you recite this name on the skies, the doors of the skies and the gates will open. So this holy name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a name that if a person recites it, a person knows it, he can make any dua and that dua will be accepted inshaAllah by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Bal'am, he knew that Ismullah al-A'zam, he knew it. Allah did not choose him. As a messenger, he did not choose him. He chose Musa alayhi salam. So Bal'am became angry. Allah knows. Allah says in the Quran, He is best who knows whom to choose to carry His message. Allahu a'lam, haythu yaj'al risalatah. Who carries His message? But some people become jealous. So this Bal'am became jealous. And hence he wanted to take his donkey and go on top of a mountain and pray on Musa alayhi salam. Make dua against Musa alayhi salam. You know the enemy of my enemy is, 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 or is my friend. So Bal'am became a friend of who? Fir'aun. Fir'aun. He hates Musa. Fir'aun also hates Musa. Allah, then we become friends. So Fir'aun told him, why don't you pray a dua to finish, destroy Musa? Destroy him, khalas. You know Ismullah al -Aban. He said, yes, I will do so. So he rides his donkey and then halfway through, the donkey stops. He steps off his donkey and starts pushing it, pulling the donkey. Come, why did you stop? Come. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the donkey speak. He said, what are you trying to do, ya Bal'am? You want to speak and pray dua against the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's not going to happen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to him in Surah Al-A'raf. In Surah Al-A'raf, Allah refers to Bal'am in verse 176 where Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَاتْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ الَّذِي آتَيْنَاهُ آيَاتِنَا فَانْسَلَخَ مِنْهَا فَأَتْبَعَهُ الشَّيْطَانُ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْغَاوِينَ and tell them the, the, the story of the person whom we gave him our signs, our ayat. Ismullah al -Azam. He received it. But fansalakha minha. Have you seen a snake? Some of you, if you notice a snake, it changes its skin. It, it has that ability. It sheds its old skin and grows new skin. So once it sheds that old skin, it, it disassociates itself from that skin which was wrapping it. You know, the, the skin was wrapping the snake. Yet, it, the snake, it disassociated from that skin that was wrapping it. SubhanAllah, the, the word Allah uses here is so beautiful. He uses the same word. Fansalakha. Fansalakha means this person was surrounded by the mercy of Allah, by the ayat of Allah. He knew Ismullah al-A'zam. Imagine, SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. The person had that level of taqwa, that level of piety, that level of, of, of fear of Allah, understanding. Yet he took himself away from that cover, just like the snake. That rap was disassociated from him. Fansalakha minha. And then what happens? When a person disassociates himself from Allah's signs, Allah's mercy, what happens? Who comes to him then? Shaytan. Fa'atba'ahu shaytan. He became among the transgressors, the oppressors. Subhanallah. That's why Mu'mineen and Mu'minat always, always pray to Allah for Husnul Aqiba. Husnul Aqiba means that we remain on the wilaya of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad sallallahu alayhi majma'in. That we remain on the love of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam We don't leave this love. You don't know. 30 years, 40 years, we live on the love of Ahlul Bayt. We come to Layali Al Qadr, we pray, we attend their majalis. But subhanallah, something happens, shaitan comes to us and makes us disassociate ourselves from Ahlul Bayt. Wal billah. Wal billah.
like this person did Bal'a. so constantly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly do tawbah istighfar ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us on this path the path of ahl al-bayt alayhim salam that's why in one of the du'as we read sometimes in the qunut which is found in the Quran it says Rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana Oh Allah do not deviate our hearts after you have guided us we should read this du'a we should say to Allah Ya Allah uktub lana husna al-aqiba a good end a good end not that we live our life 50 years 60 years and then in the last week the last month, the last year, we destroy everything that we've built. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Musa that I chose you. There were other people, but you were the one who was qualified. Here Imam al-Sadiq sallallahu alayhi wa has a very interesting hadith. He says, Kun lima la tarju, arja minka lima tarju. فهذا موسى بن عمران ذهب ليقتبس لأهله نارا فرجع إليهم نبي مرسل إمام الصادق صلوات الله وسلامه عليه states a very interesting hadith about our lives he says be to what you don't expect more hopeful than to what you expect how so? He says, for example, take a look at Musa. He gives an example. He says, Musa saw fire, or what appeared to be fire. He told his family, I will go get some fire and come back. So when he approached the tree, he was expecting to see what? Fire. He approached the tree expecting to get some heat. He approached the tree expecting maybe to see some people and ask for directions, as we discussed last time that's what he was expecting it did not even occur to him that he will be given what Risala, the message totally unexpected but that's what happened Musa alayhi salam goes to the fire Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says he went to the fire expecting to come back to his family with a fire with a torch and instead he came back as a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so sometimes in life, Imam al-Sadiq says, expect the unexpected more than what you expect of the expected. Things sometimes happen you don't even think about. And you wonder, you sit down, how did that happen? You know, how, how is this? How did this work out? That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his wisdom. Today when I mentioned in Salat al-Jumu'ah, the khutbah, I mentioned that always pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq, for success, such that he always guides us to the best of our destiny. And that we don't commit a sin, wal'iyadu billah, for which we have to suffer its consequences. Wal'iyadu billah. And if we do that, the month of Ramadan is the best time for us to do istighfar, to seek repentance and tawbah. Because sometimes you might meet someone You'll meet someone. That someone you meet could change the course of your life. Could change the course of your life. In a way you may not have expected. Sometimes this change is a positive change. It's a good change. Sometimes no. Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyad. Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyad was a thief. He was a thief. He used to steal from people, rob people's homes, this man. One day, he goes into somebody's house to steal from, to rob the house. He was expecting to find some goods to steal. That's what he came for. That was his business. Like many people in this day and age also. Although this day and age, the method of stealing has changed. Today they steal in broad daylight using the law. It's all by the law. Nonetheless, he goes there expecting to steal goods. He comes across a room where he hears a person praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
crying, weeping, saying, Alam yatni lilladina amanu an takhsha'a qulubuhum li dhikrillah. Has not the time come for those who believe that their hearts find peace, find tranquility in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the remembrance of Allah? Hasn't the time come for believers to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believers, mu'mineen? Alam ya'ni lilladheena amanu an takhsha'a qulubuhum li dhikrillah. Allah is talking to the believers. O oh, believers, you people who pray, you people who fast, Shouldn't you now fear me a little bit? Shouldn't you remember your akhirah? Remember to respect me, respect my laws, obey my laws, obey my salat, obey the ahkam. Hasn't that time come? When will, you, when will it come then? When you die, when you leave this dunya? When is it? So sit down and reflect a little bit. So this person was reading this ayah and crying and crying and reading it again and crying. Fulayl, he listens to him, listens, listens, listens until his eye starts to shed their tears. And he said, yes, ya Allah, the time has come. The time has come. An al-awan, an al-awan. And he leaves the house of this man as a mu'min, as a muttaqi. He then meets with the people whom he robbed. Either he gives, he gives them back their goods or he compensates them for it. And he changes his life from being a person who is a terrorizer of the city, a thief who steals, to a person who is muttaqi, abid, zahid in the masjid. Did he expect that? No. But he must have done something. Now we don't know. The ruwayat don't mention this, the riwayat that mention his story, they don't tell us. But he must have done something. Maybe that Laylatul Qadr in that year, he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking him for forgiveness. Maybe. And hence, that incident happened. That was not a coincidence. I mentioned today in the Islamic, Shia Islamic philosophy, we don't have a term such as coincidence. Everything is for a reason. Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyad, for him to choose this house in particular to rob that night and for this man to be up and praying to Allah at that moment, it is not a coincidence. It's a reason for it. And Fudayl change, changes his life. So here Imam al-Sadiq says, how many times things like this happen? So be of what you don't expect, more hopeful of what you expect sometimes. You apply to a university expecting to be accepted, let's say, for example, in medicine, but instead you get accepted in engineering, for example. Totally different field. But that's what happens. So here, Musa, alayhi salam, this is what happens to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I've chosen you, so listen to what is going to be revealed. فَاسْتَمِعْ لِمَا يُوحَى Now, he does not say, I am your Lord. He says, Innani ana Allah. He doesn't say, Inni ana Rabbuk. In the previous ayah, or the two ayahs before, Allah told Musa, I am your Lord. Right? Here Allah says, no, not Lord. He says, Innani ana Allah. Why? In the first case, Allah wanted to comfort Musa, السلام, prepare him for the risala, the message. Prepare him for it. That it is me, your Lord, speaking to you. This is not some whispers you're hearing. This is not imagination. This is real. I'm your Lord. Rabbuk. So relax and be prepared. Now he is receiving the message. So here Allah is saying, Innani an Allah. La ilaha illa ana fa'budni. And I mentioned before, a few lectures ago, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the name that he has given himself, Allah is a name that contains all of his attributes. For example, Allah has attributes, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Sami'u, Al-Basir, Al-Ghaffar, Al-Qahar, so on and so forth. These are attributes of Allah. The name that combines all these attributes is the name Allah. And that name is masculine. And hence Allah sometimes refers to himself as Hu Allah. He is Allah. Not that Allah is masculine or feminine. No. 
But the noun, that noun in Arabic is masculine noun. And hence he uses هو هو Allah. Here he says إنني أنا Allah. I am Allah. The one who combines all these attributes. And then what? لا إله إلا أنا. There is no God other than me. So now, Ya Musa, now that you realize that I am Allah and that there is no God but me, then what should one do? If one recognizes Allah, one recognizes that there is no God other than Allah, he tells him what? Fa'budni. Fa'budni. Then worship me, Ya Musa. Worship me. Allah is the name that contains all the attributes. He is the Rahman, He is the Rahim, He is the Wahid, He is the Qahar, He is the Zahir, He is the Batan, so on and so forth. All these attributes are within Allah. So now if a person stands there and realizes that He is the Merciful, He is the Beneficent, He is the Capable One, He is the Powerful, He is the One who gives the Sustainer, a Razaq, And there is no associate to him. He is by himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No associate. No partners. Now that you've recognized this, then worship Allah. Fa'budni. Fa'budni. So worship me. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses a form of ibadah. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي And establish salat for my remembrance. For dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here, how come he chose salat? We have an iman. Iman, according to Amir al-Mu'mineen salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayh. He says, Al-iman ma'rifatun bil-qalb. Iman is a knowledge in the heart. Knowledge in the heart alone? No. Wa-iqrarun bil-lisan. Also in the tongue, you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wa anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, wa anna aliyan wa awladahu al-ma'asumina bil-haqqi hujajullah sallallahu alayhi wa ajma'in. Allah Allah. This is now testimony, the testifying that a person gives in the tongue. A person, when he becomes a Muslim, that's what he testifies. Now, when he does so, he's become a Muslim. Has he become a mu'min yet? No. So Iman is a knowledge in the heart, a belief, a faith in the heart. In addition to the heart, also an iqrar, a confession on the tongue. You confess that. If a person asks you, what is your religion? You say, I'm a Muslim. So you're a Muslim, do you believe in Allah? Of course I believe in Allah. Do you believe in the Day of Judgment? Yes, I believe in the Day of Judgment. Do you believe in the Prophets? Yes, I believe in the Prophets. This is, I'm a Muslim. So now this is something in the tongue. But then what? وَعَمَلٌ بِالْأَرْكَانِ And to do and perform the actions. Once you perform the actions, then you've become a mu'min. A person prays the salat, then he's become a mu'min. He performs hajj, he's a mu'min. He prays salat, he's become a mu'min. So these arkan, عَمَلٌ بِالْأَرْكَانِ And it, it depends. The degree of iman varies from a person to a person. A person, for example, says, I will fast the month of Ramadan, I can bear not eating and drinking. I will also pray. I can bear praying five times a day. But to ask me to pay khums, no, no, no. No, Khalas, no. this is the limit. Khalas, don't be greedy here. You know, we'll pray, we'll fast, no problem. I'll fast 24 hours, not just 20 hours. 24 hours. My money though is my money. Khalas, ya Allah. It is written in the Bible, you know, give to Caesar what's to Caesar. And give to God what's to God. That's in the Bible, a verse in the Bible, by the way. Caesar gets what he wants, and you give Allah what he wants. Khalas. So this is my limit. Khalas, ya Allah. My money is my money. Salat and ibadah and worship, siyam, no problem. I'll do that for you, ya Allah. So this is the limit. A person, for example, says, no, I will also pay my homes. I'll pay my zakat. No problem. Money is not an issue. But hijab, no, 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 no. Khalas. That's it. That's the limit I have. Don't be greedy now. I won't do, I won't do that. A person says that having a beard, no, khalas, I'll do ibadah. Although the maraja say you should have a beard. No, khalas, this is, this is my limit here. So there are degrees of iman. 
levels of Iman. And a person should read the Sermon of Amir al-Mu'mineen of Taqwa, of description of Muttaqeen, to figure out which level does he quantify at, where he gives about a hundred description of Muttaqeen, of pious people. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Musa alayhi salam, Ya Musa, fa'budni, worship me. First of all, recognize me. I am Allah. So here, recognition in the heart. Then worship me. So here you're confessing, you're worshiping, you say, I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then, not only that, perform the actions. And he chose one action, which is salat. Why salat? Because it's the pillar of the religion. The pillar of the religion. It's an important action. And Allah says, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي Perform and establish salat. Establish it. Not just reading salat the way you and I read salat usually, with our minds floating somewhere else. That's reading salat. But iqamat salat no. When you establish salat with understanding, you know what is right and what is wrong. So the roots of the religions is the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the belief in prophethood, and the belief in qiyamah. Here Allah talked to him about tawheed. Inshallah next time we will talk about the remaining ones. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned salat. أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ Recite salat or establish salat for my remembrance, to remember me. So that you continuously be in touch with me, Ya, ya, ya Musa. أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another ayah, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ Indeed, in the remembrance of Allah, hearts find peace and tranquility. تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ And Allah says in a third ayah in Surah Al-Fajr, يَا أَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسُ الْمُطْمَئِنَّةِ اِرْجِعِي إِلَىٰ رَبِّكِ رَاضِيَةً مَرْضِيَّةً فَدْخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي وَدْخُلِي جَنَّتِي So if we combine those three ayat together, this one from Surah Taha, the second one from Surah Ar-Ra'ad, and the third one from Surah Al-Fajr, we say, we come to the conclusion that Salat leads to, if established correctly, if it is established correctly. Some people read Salat, but then immediately they go out to the market and start cheating people, lying to people. The Salat, they don't really understand. They're reading Salat, they don't, and they're not establishing Salat. They finish the salat and immediately they call people and start doing ghiba wal iyadu billah. This person doesn't really understand salat. But if a person establishes salat, then what he has done, he established a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dhikrullah, remembrance of Allah. The remembrance of Allah leads a person to what? To peace and tranquility. Tatma'innu al qulub, tatma'nina. Right? And the peace and tranquility leads where? يَا أَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسُ الْمُطْمَئِنَّةِ اِرْجِعِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكِ رَاضِيَةً مَرْضِيَةً فَدْخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي وَدْخُلِي جَنَّتِي جَنَّةِ So this salat that a person prays can lead him to jannah. Can lead him to jannah. If we combine these three ayat together from three different surahs. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Musa, Ya Musa, establish salat. Not because you are afraid of my punishment, not because you want my Jannah, but rather because you enjoy talking to me. The Prophet says, salat. The pleasure of my eyes is prayer, salat. We en he enjoys salat, enjoys it. Like you give, for example, candy to a child. How the, the child takes the candy and, and will grab it. You know, there's a saying that says, grabbing a candy from a child. It's as difficult as grabbing a candy from a child. The child will, will hang on to this candy. You know, he loves it. He doesn't want to let it go. A mu'min enjoys salat. Rasulullah, he enjoys, he enjoys salat. That's, that's something he enjoys. How many of us actually enjoy salat? In many cases, many times we pray and then we say, Oh, Alhamdulillah, I finished my prayers. I'm done. What a relief. Alhamdulillah. 
Oh, Ramadan is finished. What a relief. Alhamdulillah, khalas. We've become tired. You know, 30 days fasting, fasting, fasting. We don't understand Allah's mercy upon us. Imam al-Sajjad sallallahu alayhi in the dua of bidding farewell to the month of Ramadan. He says, peace be upon you, O month, who is awaited before it comes. And it is missed before it ends. The month of Ramadan, we miss it before it ends. I tell some of the mu'mineen, those who stayed in the Layali al-Qadr, the eaves of Qadr until Fajr, those who worked really hard, may Allah bless them insha'Allah. Those individuals, if you remember that Layali al-Qadr, that last week, you find such a beautiful time, such a spiritually cleansing time. You find you really, you walk out of the masjid or the, or the mosque or the center feeling as if you've been to a spa, a spiritual spa. You've just cleansed yourself, showered yourself. That's a person feels. And then you'll miss it. Now, really, a mu'min misses these days. How beautiful it is the mu'mineen sat together reading Dua al Jawshan, for example, that Dua. A mu'min came and he said, I've been waiting for this Dua al Jawshan. One of the mu'mineen said, in Laylat al Qadr, I waited for since last year. I've been waiting for Dua al Jawshan. So that night of ibadah, that night is missed. Truly, it's missed. A mu'min misses these things. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Musa alayhi salam, Ya Musa, establish salat for my remembrance. To remember me. To do my dhikr. Because my dhikr will provide you peace and tranquility. It will make you happy in dunya. And in the akhirah it will take you to jannah. Take you to jannah. So you find Ahlul Bayti alayhi salam, sometimes Amir al-Mu'mineen used to pray 1,000 rak'ah in the day and the night, in one day and night cycle. Within 24 hours, he prays 1,000 rak'ah. There, were, there was a, a garden that had 500 palm trees. He used to go and pray two rak'at next to each one. By the time he's finished, there are 500, 1,000 rak'ah within 24 hours. Now, if we take a look at it, praying 100 rak'ah in Laylat al-Qadr, mashallah, our knees start cracking and mashallah, we start, you know, Weeping. Amir al used to pray 1,000 rak'ah. Imagine how much he enjoyed salat. How much he really enjoyed that ibadah. And if a person understands his salat, then salat tanha an al fahsha'i wal munkar. That salat should stop a person from committing sins, evil. And that's why in the hadith it is said if you want to know how much of your salat is accepted, Look at how much that Salat stopped you from committing sins. How much? A person, for example, walks on the street and he sees a scene that is haram. And we live in an environment that is full of such scenes. How much ability and power does he have to turn his gaze? To say, A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajeem. Say, Astaghfirullah. How much? The more power this person has, it means his salat has been accepted to that level. A person, for example, does it 60% of the time. It means his salat is 60% accepted. That's how much salat has created a shield for him. A person does it 90% of the time. His salat is 90% accepted. A person wants to do ghibah. He remembers that, no, 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 I shouldn't be doing this. Let me stop. Astaghfirullah rabbi The salat, it means it's been accepted to that level which stops that person from committing these things. A person is to yell at another mu'min or at one's parents or at one's children to shout at them or at one's family. He remembers, no, 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 my salat stops me from doing this. And since I am performing the salat, I'm in the state of peace and tranquility. Dhikrullah, tama'neena, tama'neena. So that's it, khalas, we'll get about it. And that's what salat establishes. That is one of the essence of Usul al-Din, and that is Tawheed, monotheism. There remains two more which are the essence and the core, Nubuwa and Ma'ad. These are the essence of Tawheed, or, or Usul al-Din. Then we have two more, which is Adala and Imama. This is for the followers of Ahl al-Bayt, alayhim salam One of those three 
Nubuwa and Ma'ad and Tawheed, one of them, Allah doesn't mention them. Doesn't mention it with Musa alayhi salam for a particular reason. Which one? We'll find out tomorrow, insha'Allah, when we continue our discussion about Surah Taha. This is now the time of the end of the day on a Friday. Fatima al Zahra sallallahu alayhi wa alayha used to send a servant on the roof of her house on a Friday. And she would tell him, the minute you see the sun going below the horizon, tell me. Because that is the time of ibadah. So he would tell her. And immediately she would start doing dua because this is the time where dua is highly recommended and inshallah accepted. And this is the last Jum'ah, the last Friday in the holy month of Ramadan. Now, inshallah, you being the guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this place and in this month, raise your hands for the dua. Inshallah, dua is accepted at this point. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Amman yujibu al-muttar idha da'a wa yakshifu al-su' Amman yujibu al-muttar idha da'a wa yakshifu al-su' أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء اللهم إنا نسألك وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله 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 إلهي بفاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها اكشف عنا السوء يا الله اللهم اقض حوائج المؤمنين والمؤمنات يا الله اللهم اقض حوائجنا جميعا يا الله اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا يا الله كفر عنا سيئاتنا يا الله وتوفنا مع الأبرار يا الله اللهم أعتق رقابنا من النار يا الله وأدخلنا الجنة مع محمد وآل محمد يا الله اللهم شافي وعافي جميع مرضى المؤمنين والمؤمنات لا سيما من أوصونا بالدعاء منهم فردا فردا ألبسهم لباس العافية يا الله اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اخذل أعداء الدين اللهم ارحم المؤمنين والمؤمنات في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم وفقنا لما يرضيك جنبنا معاصيك اجعل عواقب أمورنا إلى خير اللهم اجعلنا من شيعة محمد وآل محمد يا الله وارزقنا شفاعتهم في الدنيا وفي القبر وفي الآخرة يا الله اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج واجعلنا من شيعته وأنصاره وأعوانه والمستشهدين بين يديه اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا 
وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أرنا الطلعة الرشيدة والغرة الحميدة واكحل أنظارنا بنظرة منا إليه اللهم ارزقنا حج بيتك الحرام في عامنا هذا وفي كل عام واغفر لنا تلك الذنوب العظام فإنه لا يغفرها غيرك يا رحمن يا علام ولا تخلنا من زيارة قبر نبيك والأئمة عليهم السلام اللهم نقسم عليك بالزهراء فاطمة إلا ما رزقتنا شفاعة الزهراء يا الله يا الله يا الله لقضاء الحوائج ولشفاء المرضى ولكشف هذه الغم عن هذه الأمة ولتعجيل فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات لا سيما أرواح موات الجالسين والحاضرين رحم الله من يقرأ السورة المباركة الفاتحة مع الصلوات. اللهم صل على محمد. بسم الله.